We are here today to talk about fossil. And one of the things that excited me about this conversation is that it's really, you can ground it. You can go into the mall, you can go to a department store, you can go to a fossil store and say, I know this brand, I know this watch. Uh, this is a company that's been around for 34, 35 years. Yes. But in recent years, it's been going through a transformation about what the company is about, what it looks like to the world and who it is to its employees. So exactly. tell us about that. Yes, thank you, and I'm thrilled to be here. It's always great to be in, in like-minded company, those of us who care about purpose and, and how do companies show up in that way. Um, for us, it's been, it's been an interesting uh, journey, and, and I say it's a journey because our CEO is our co-founder, and so he always has been a purpose-driven person. Um, but if you know Fossil, the company as well, there are a lot of other brands that we do. Um, authenticity is at our core, so we're not always very visible in terms of how it is we show up publicly. And so it's really been this incredible shift during the last couple of years in particular, mindful of our workforce. So about 67, 68% of our employees are millennials. Our average age is 28. Um, and when we look at our consumers as well, you know, strong base of millennials and also strong base of women. So we've had this intentional shift over the last couple of years of what's our narrative externally. And we've always been very reserved uh, in terms of talking about purpose because we did not want it to be cause marketing. For us, it is truly not about influencing consumer behavior. It's about how we want our employees to show up every day. Um, but it's now also about how do we engage our consumers who really care about some of the things that we care about as well. So a lot of people, we were talking about this backstage, a lot of people tend to bash on millennials and really when it comes to this workforce capacity to stereotype or make fun of millennials who want to come to work every day and have something to wake up for. Um, but you talked about really taking inspiration from that and actually feeling that as a driver for the transformation process you've gone through. Absolutely. Um, I was actually hired five years ago to help create the foundation and global philanthropy. And, and the thing that our CEO and our leadership team recognized at the time is the fact that um, our employees are millennials. Most of them, as I mentioned, are millennials. And when they come to interview, they are expecting us to show up in terms of purpose, right? So when I think about five, five years ago and even now, I will tell you 98% of the folks who come to interview, um, all of whom are millennials, wanna know what do we stand for as a company? Um, so for us, it really has been important that we engage millennials, that we inspire millennials. Um, and so one of the fun things for us, I consider it fun and my team considers it fun is, you know, what are the on ramps we're creating for them to actually show up at work in terms of purpose, whether that's how they're designing a product, whether they're on the selling side or whether, hey, you know what, I've been wanting to do something in my community, but not really sure about how to go about that. So we really are trying to create a platform where we can meet them where they are. Um, but hopefully once they've had that initial experience that this actually is part of their life. So let's make this a little concrete. What are some of the areas where you all have been focusing on changing both company culture, but articulating a sense of mission and purpose? Yes, absolutely. You know, as I mentioned, we started with the foundation and then I'll fast forward to some of the other commitments we have in place around sustainability. Um, and we often don't refer to it as a corporate social responsibility. We do look at, at corporate social purpose and who it is that we are as a company. But one of the things we started five years ago through the foundation is to support and partner with social entrepreneurs. So a lot of love for Acumen. And, and a lot of the some of the folks that are here today and we've been on a journey with them in terms of understanding some of the needs in the social entrepreneurship space and so we landed on youth agency and youth empowerment as being an area of opportunity for us about five years ago and that work continues and so one of the concrete things for me that's really exciting is for our employees was to get them to understand what systems change is right how does a company like fossil get involved in partnering with social entrepreneurs to tackle some of these problems and not just put band-aids on them necessarily. And so the good news is that around the globe, and we're a global company, we've had quite a few of our employees get involved in terms of pro bono work to the extent that some have actually left Fossil to go work for these social enterprises. So that may not be success to their managers, <laughs> uh, but I will say for us to know that this work was so important uh, that that person, and we've had several employees who have actually left to go work at a social enterprise, some that have left to actually go and get their master's degree in development or social entrepreneurship or impact investing. So that's a concrete example of what we're trying to create in terms of our culture, where again, there's this seamless transition of person being their whole self at work, and then also how it is that they're able to impact the world. Some of what you have told me is that this transformation of the culture within Fossil and that employee purpose has actually had some impact on how the brand is perceived to the outside world. So talk about that translation process. Absolutely. Um, if you know Fossil, and again, it's Fossil Group, so there's a lot of brands underneath our portfolio, but say the Fossil brand is probably the one that most of you know. 
um, is that we, we are truly, when I speak to authenticity, I know a lot of companies speak to authenticity, you know, we're one we're very humble company. And so it's only been in the last couple of years where you've started to see more advertising only because as we know with social media, advertising and marketing has really changed. And so when I came on board five years ago, um, I'd, I had lots of conversations with, with my CEO in terms of kind of how did we want to show up with this work? And we were always clear to say, this is not about cause marketing, et cetera. But I said, if this is about inspiring our employees to be a part of it, we have to communicate at some level. Otherwise, they have no idea we're doing this great work. You know, so we were very mindful then in terms of supporting external causes. And I was always clear to say, okay, when there was a press release or whatever the form of communication was, let me review it because I want to make sure the headline isn't fossil. Mm -hmm. This is not fossil donated, fossil gave, et cetera. This is about you and your mission and how it is you're showing up. And if later on you want to say we're helping enable that, great. Fast forward, as we well know, the world is changing and it not has changed. It is changing. And I think we're now more mindful that consumers want to know how we're showing up and that we have to stand for something. So the good news is I think we've started to build a platform where a lot of organizations start, have started to know who we are in certain spaces. Um, and so we're more comfortable now creating that new narrative in terms of our brands and how it is that they will be represented moving forward. But I will say, as we've had this uh, conversation during the last year, and every, Janice, why aren't we seeing more of our brand, our name out there in terms of purpose, is making sure we do it in a thoughtful way. Um, so we have engaged thought partners, um, Futera is an organization here locally, who we started to partner with as well in terms of creating that narrative at the company level, but also at the brand level and ensuring that all of our troops are aligned with that. So before we go out with what they call the magic is making sure our house is in order, looking at our practices around environment, looking at what we're doing in the community and also our internal practices around people. Another thing that you all have been working on is women's empowerment. And this is something that the Atlantic has spent some time thinking about. We had a cover story a couple of years ago about uh, the way that Silicon Valley uh, can really be a misogynistic and horrible place for women to be. You come out of the Bay Area, so you have that background. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering how, as a company that's focused on being uh, forward-looking for these young employees who are really creating a new technologically uh, savvy product, you don't fall into some of the same traps that Silicon Valley has so often. Yeah, and I'm very mindful of those traps, as you mentioned, having uh, spent most of my career actually in Silicon Valley. I think one of the exciting things for us, and, and as I mentioned, when you fast forward in terms of our strategies around sustainability and, and beyond just the foundation, one of our commitments uh, is women empowerment. And that was really an awe. It so much wasn't a surprise. It was for us to actually affirm that, no, this is important to the company uh, through, through a sustainability lens. And so our commitment was announced last year. Um, and for us, I think what makes it believable and making sure we don't fall into those traps is the fact that 70% of our workforce are women. Um, and then when we look at our consumer base, 70% of our consumers are women. So there, there is a truth just in terms of who we are as a company as to why this is important. Um, that doesn't mean everything is perfect in terms of women empowerment, even at fossil per se, but I think it is definitely a commitment that we're, we're ensuring is visible and one that we're really driving forward, looking at our practices around planet and supply chain, looking at what it is and how we're showing up in communities and then also our own people. So, you know, I speak to that and that we're very mindful of the traps, um, but we're also clear that this isn't just about us as, you know, really engaging with others on this journey. Uh, so there are quite a few uh, of you in the room who we started to partner with in this space as well. You know, you had mentioned before that Fossil is trying to be seen as a leader on this topic. And I think so often when we think about tech or uh, companies that have a startup culture, even if it's not a startup, that it's flattened out to Google and Amazon and Facebook and a handful of companies in California or on the West Coast, instead of thinking about all of these other companies that are working on the, these issues and, and really taking them seriously. So how do you hope to position Fossil as a leader? and to have this kind of product, a watch, be taken seriously as uh, the hub of, of this kind of conversation? Oh, thank you. So a lot of, there's a lot I can unpack in, in terms of that question and us being a leader. So um, as most of you know, of course, the world of fashion and work of tech, um, the world of technology has started to blend, you know, as we see smartwatches, et cetera. And so we, we truly are in that space uh, and a leader in that space as well. And so we are seeing that, that merging start to happen already. Um, I think for us though is um, 
some of it starts with just strategy and practice. And you know what I mean? Going back to um, the base around strategy and practice, making sure that how we're showing up is consistent. Um, you know, how it is that we're positioning the product, if you will. Um, women empowerment, as I mentioned, is, is one of our commitments, but we have other commitments as well. So we're mindful it's not all about women. There's other things that are going to be extremely important for us in this space. Reducing our footprint is another effort that's going to be important for us and something that we're putting some rigor behind. Design for the future uh, is another commitment that has a lot to do with technology and how, what materials are we using when we design our products. So we're, we're mindful that um, there's a lot of things that are going to come together and hopefully come together in a good way. Um, there are several of us at the company who do have a technology background, so I'm sure that helps um, being mindful to bring some of those practices. Some of them are good practices and some not as good. Um, so we're mindful of those as well. Um, but yeah, this, this, the trend will continue in terms of the intersection between technology and fashion as well. Hmm. So we only have a few minutes left, and uh, in a moment I'm going to call for questions, so be thinking of those. Um, but, you know, this conversation about purpose for me is so personal in the sense that we're talking about how to make companies, which can be these big abstract entities, and really bringing it to a question that's about people. It's about creating a sense of meaning and purpose. And I'm curious for you, what excites you about being part of this uh, goal at Fossil to reinvent what you're about as a company? Um, there's a lot. I think sometimes it starts even just, you know, the truth, you know, this company's truth and being clear about the why. Why are we doing that? And knowing that in this case, it really is coming from a genuine purpose, um, you know, no pun intended, but this is coming from a company that was intended to be purpose driven, but that wasn't always necessarily explicitly communicated internally and externally. And so I think what gets me excited is just knowing that, um, this is not even a short-term play. This is really about changing the future of the company and how Fossil is viewed. Um, and being able to create that from the ground up, um, even though we've had that sponsorship at the top, has been really, really exciting. Um, I think how our employees are leaning in uh, every day, not that we have all 100% involved, but I think that's something that gets us excited every day. And that, you know, I often remind our team that this is not about us. You know, this is about what this looks like when we're all gone 10, 20 years from now. So um, there are always moments of truth in terms of whether or not we're doing this well or not. Um, I think the other thing that's really exciting as well is just uh, mindful of um, some of the partners that we get to partner with. And, and for us, this is about systems change, right? This is not we're always clear, you know, that this isn't about just putting band-aids on problem, but we're working, I think, with some of the leading partners in this space, and we're often asked to bring others along. So there aren't a lot of companies, there are some who are leaning in in terms of systems change, but, you know, how do we kind of change the face uh, of corporations to really look at tackling some of these big problems? Um, so I know that's a lot, you know, in terms <laughs> of how, but I think, you know, we're seeing evidence that there are some uh, some bright spots um, starting to happen. Yeah, and that's one other question that I want to make sure I get to. You've talked so much about how this is a forward-looking goal, yes. and I do think that as we have this conversation about purpose, it is about uh, sort of looking forward into the future, both of what business is becoming in the United States yeah. and all over the world, but also this sense that you can't keep uh, having companies that are just extractive. You have to have companies that are sort of looking into the future, that are, are working with people and, and for people. Um, so I, I, I want to make sure we touch on that as well. Sort of how is this about creating a future for Fossil, not only in terms of the bottom line, but also making it a company that's sort of suited for where the economy and the world is going? Exactly. There's, there, there have been some organic things we've been doing in terms of our employees leaning in, but what, what I've shared um, with our leadership team and, and have a similar conversation coming with our board, this can no longer be pet projects, right? This really has to be an effort that's integrated with our business strategies. Uh, and we are. There's some things that we're doing that are integrated with our, our business. So there's some, some efforts that will be launched next year, especially on the fossil brand side. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's some things we're doing even with the smartwatches. But I think the truth that we're also saying is that this has to be an effort where there's visible sponsorship um, as well and, and really incubating this into the company. And so that's where we, you know, look at this as not being, CSR is great, but how do we move this beyond CSR? Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, I often say that the real truth of this too is for my job to be obsolete, right? And when you think about examples like Nike and Unilever and some of those brands is we really look at this as being true to our innovation practices um, and looking at efforts to be disruptive. And so I said, one of the indicators of that will be when my job is actually obsoleted or my job is just to help ensure that that voice or that narrative is created, but that it's really integrated into all of our business practices. So everyone 
anyone who's designing something is intentionally designing with purpose, whether that's the materials they're using, whether that's you know, looking at circular, what happens at the end of disposing the product, but really integrating at every single touch point throughout the company some, something that has to do with purpose, uh, or even inclusive business strategies as to who we're engaging in our supply chain. Um, so that to me is where I know we've done this well and, and starting, at least we're starting to have those conversations amongst our senior leadership team and then in a couple of weeks with our board of directors. So in a funny way, your purpose is to work yourself out of a job. My, I've said that <laughs> to, through and through. That is my purpose is to work myself out of a job. So we have time for just one question. Who has a really good one that can be articulated in like a, just one 10 seconds? One. <laughs> yeah. All right, here in the middle. Yes, uh, I was on URL. Um, I have a question about uh, reconciling uh, the power of purpose or purpose-driven uh, uh, practices with uh, supply chain decisions based on the lowest cost. Wow, the, I just had that email the other day from someone about the cost, uh, and that comes up through and through, and so I, I will continue to reinforce that it's not all about cost, meaning that there are some, there's some things we shouldn't even do anymore. If we want to drive cost, let's just not do that anymore, right? So there, I wouldn't say we have all of that um, in place yet, but there's some things we can definitely do around packaging. Um, I'm not sure every time you go in a store, are you looking for a bag, right? So there definitely are some things that are low-hanging fruit um, that we will start to tackle. But I mean, there's no doubt there's always going to be, at least when you're starting something like even starting uh, or launching a new product, there's always going to be an upfront investment cost. But where do you get to that tipping point uh, where the costs start to go down? I think there's some of those truths that we're going to recognize, but I think there are other opportunities already where we can really look at driving costs down by not doing some things. Hmm. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.